understand. Well, you had mentioned Steve Snyder, which then leads us into kind of another aspect of all of this, and that is how, from your perspective as an artist, how does art and how does your art affect people in society? Okay. And what does, that, uh, what does that do and how does that give voice to what you're trying to... Okay. So I have read a fair number of books about how the mind works with art and I've listened to artists, how they want to touch people's emotions, etc. Ah. What I value greatly, because I think it's important, is these are complex processes and developments that are going on. For example, you hear uh, the scientists are worried about carbon emissions rising up out of the ocean and, and going up and te teaming up with carbon and other greenhouse gases and boiling the planet. Now, that's very hard to envision. I believe when somebody has a picture, a painting, let's say, of that process, and they add it to what they've read and what they thought, this picture stays with them, and they suddenly have a new insight of that process. So I'm making images that I hope people will absorb and keep in their minds, and that will motivate them, especially. I'm, I mostly paint, in a way I don't like to say this, but I only paint for the smartest, most powerful people in the world, because those are the ones that can do something with this new knowledge. This, this, these images, these stories that come out of my paintings that can help inspire them to use their power to do more. And what makes you feel that you can influence those great minds that you paint for? Well, they tend to uh, come around to me and the organizations that have uh, displayed my paintings, um, invited me to speak, they are the Department of the Interior of the United States, the Department of Commerce of the United States, NASA, the Stanford Woods Institute of the Environment, the Precourt Energy Efficiency Center at Stanford, uh, State of California, top uh, executive for uh, the State of, the Secretary of, of Resources, stands in front of my paintings and gives a speech. And it is a fact that the availability of my painting on a particular topic has motivated some powerful organizations to have an event. It has given them the idea, the excuse to have an event and to bring have my paintings up there and then to bring in speakers and to bring in an audience. I think if a painting has motivated an organization like NASA to have put on an event on the topic, uh, that is a sign that it is having an influence. The art is having an influence on the world. So does the art um does it provide a solution? I try in all my paintings. In fact, my last three paintings, I have put Congress in all three paintings. Why? Why? Because I feel like Congress needs to be educated and maybe even forced to address the big issues of our time. It's wonderful that Obama and other organizations are executing uh, orders to do this or that to reduce climate change or to get along better with the North Koreans or whatever. But it's Congress that makes the laws and has the money to make things work. And you know, I, I tend to think with climate change, for example, there is, there is a lot of people working on solutions. But on the other hand, the carbon emissions are increasing faster than ever. And it's only going to be when Congress acts, puts a tax on 
carbon emissions and does other things that we can ever say we are not heading toward a uh, humanity catastrophe. So I put uh, Congress in, uh, for example, I made a painting, Don Quixote fights uh, climate change and Don is out there with his big lance and he's trying to fight the uh, carbon, uh, the greenhouse gas monster, but then his, there's Congress at the end of the spear, the lance, holding on to it, pulling it down. And uh, I just recently finished a painting on uh, what I consider to be the most vulnerable piece of infrastructure in any developed nation, and that is the electric grid. And, and I decided to just uh, relate global warming to that particular piece of vulnerable infrastructure. So I made a 15-foot painting, Gone with the Wind is the Electric Grid, and I put Congress right in the center, broken, and, it, and that painting allows me, when I get up in front of, you know, I've given speeches in front of the U.S. United States Geological Survey, and I get, a, get an opportunity to talk about how the next generation of storms are coming about and look, Congress is broken already and we need to somehow or another fix it or, or else the march into caveman world is coming. So, so it's, it sounds as if you're, these are very complex topics, but it sounds as if you're quite confident that you can deliver both a wonderful painting and a very needed social message all combined. It is what I worked very hard doing and I'm very thankful to the organizations that um, support my work. How is it being supported? This particular uh, painting, what, what's going on with this painting and are, are you getting support for it? What's going on? I'm not getting financial support. Uh, my wife and I tend to fund all of my painting work. I'm hoping and working to get financial support so this particular painting, we can film more of it and get the videos, whatever, out into the public. And then uh, to move the painting to different places. It is in five pieces, so it, you don't need a trailer truck. Uh, but how am I supported? If I want experts in the field from, God, NASA, from uh, SLAC, um, from the Hoover Institute, on and on, these po folks just jump up and give me an opportunity to ask questions and to share uh, their information. And then I could also say, I make the paintings available. I support their efforts to get their words out by making the painting available for their events. Do you find speaking with these experts is an influence on your process in the painting? Oh yeah, yes, I get, I get uh, ideas from from them. I try to take something from everybody and NASA is the number one organization. I mean they encourage me to make Gone with the Wind is the electric grid. I forget who encouraged me to make uh, ocean change which is another term for uh, ocean acidification and uh, I think it was the United States Geological Survey encouraged me to make a painting about sea level rise, which was going to uh, destroy San Francisco, uh, the California Delta area and the farmland. So I'm getting invitations or suggestions from uh, these organizations and then they come with their scenarios and they work at convincing me of, uh, of what may happen and the science. And uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, Jim Sweeney, the head of the Precourt Energy Efficiency Center at Stanford, who always, every year, puts on the Silicon Valley Energy Summit at Stanford. He is one of my greatest supporters. Uh, 
every few months he's always asking me, Michael, what are you going to give us at our next energy summit? What uh, groundbreaking painting, what painting will help raise the level of discussion at our event? What painting will, the fact that it's going to be there, create news, television interviews that help uh, increase attendance at these events? Mm -hmm. I feel very blessed by the, the scientists and the political leaders, uh, Jerry Hill, Senator of California, Rich Gordon, an uh, assemblyman, uh, the mayor of Palo Alto, the list goes on and on of the people who are all ready uh, to answer all my questions. Uh, it's quite wonderful. And feel impacted by, by the art and inspired to oh. make a difference. Oh, oh yes. Uh, in fact, it reminds me what Jim Sweeney said uh, on a television show, Michael brings the humanities to our efforts at Stanford to make a difference and to help make our work succeed. Right. You know. No, that's it, it's no higher compliment than that. So where will this painting and when will this painting be viewable? It's going to make its debut at this moment. I don't think anyone else is going to come in ahead of them, you know, you know, like governor, I don't think that's going to happen. There's not much time left, but it will be at the Stanford University Silicon Valley Energy Summit 2016. It will dominate the lobby June 3rd. And uh, I believe George Schultz and William Perry, Bill Perry, will both be keynote speakers at that event. And uh, I don't know if Jim Sweeney has told them yet that uh, a painting of, that is of great interest or a topic that is of great interest will be in the lobby that articulates with art what both of those men are, are very concerned with. Right, well, as, as, they, as they should be, because these are uh, very, very uh, thoughtful events. We know your wonderful paintings on other subject matter, which are very meaningful to so many people and have really made a difference in the way that we all think about global warming and now the prospect of, uh, of nuclear war uh, that is a very dangerous, uh, very dangerous thing. Oh, yes. And the more I dig into these topics, uh, the more I get a, a real feel for uh, that uh, civilization in the future, you know, is not as assured as uh, I once thought. I understand. And on that positive note, I want to thank you uh, for joining me and this wonderfully interesting conversation that we have had and uh, hopefully many people will come out to see the the painting uh, yeah. on June 3rd yes. and I'm sure it will have an enormous impact on these two most important uh, subjects. And, and I want to give, thank you for being very effective and giving me a chance to share my thoughts. It's always my pleasure. Thanks. And we want to thank you for joining us on this edition of the Michael Killen Report. As you've seen, it's been a really interesting and fascinating program tonight. We hope you share it with your friends. It's a very, very important subject matter. And we're just so happy and thankful that we have Michael Killen waging this crusade through his wonderful art to make our planet a safer and better place. Thank you. I'm Jonathan Clyde. Good night. I would say this was your best book.